but I'm a banker. Uh, I'm originally from Sri Lanka, but I've been in the trade union movement, and then, of course, uh, eventually I took up this position. Uh, my background, I'm an MBA, uh, and I'm also having a postgraduate diploma in international relations. Uni Asia Pacific uh, uh, Regional Organization. Uh, I'm uh, based in Singapore. Uh, I'm responsible for uh, finance sector activities and professional and manager activities. So, uh, uh, this is my maybe the third visit to IEB. I have uh, been here a couple of times. So, thank you very much for inviting me here. I'm happy to share our experiences. So we will continue with the Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Ekiya Christopher yes. Kamal. I am the Executive Secretary and Coordinator of the Global Forum and the World Space Council. Basically, first and quality of life for our epidemic numbers. Thank you very much. Good evening. I am Sheikh Tadri Islam Kuni, Local Council Member, Dhaka Sita, Engineer Institute of Bangladesh. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening. I am Engineer Mohammad Harun Rashid. Member Civil Engineering Division. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Pratik Kumar Ghosh. I am Member Electrical Division. I am. I am Engineer Mohyoti Namne, Fellow of IEB. Engineer Abhi Kalamari, Chandra Council Member, Institute of Engineers. Good evening. I am Samir Mohammad Fedos, Member of IEB. Uh, good evening. I am Engineer Tamil Sharkar, Technical Director. Special guest, so far. I think so. Somebody comes on that. Please introduce yourself. Engineer Kadikharan Bashar, by chairman of the Association of Dhaka Center. Engineer Sir Manjuru Lakmanju, now Honorary Eastern General Secretary, Academic and International Affairs, IV Headquarters, and Vice President, Academic and International Elect. Uh, we just had a meeting with uh, the Bank Officers Association and uh, we had uh, Dr. Atiyu Rahman, the former governor. I mean, uh, we are really uh, associating with him and we are getting him, uh, his expertise to be sh shared in the rest of the region. He has done a lot of good things and it is an exemplary mechanism, this pro-poor and pro-people orientation is something that we are sharing with the rest of the world. And he was with us uh, as a resource person uh, when we organized a uh, uh, symposium with Asian Development Bank in Japan. And last week he was also a speaker in our conference which we had in uh, Japan. Now, from the engineer's point of view, uh, question why we want to organize the professional. Uh, in the trade union movement, uh, we, uh, Uni Global Union, uh, we represent uh, almost 20 million members all over the world. We have about 900 unions in 140 countries. And we are, our headquarters is based in uh, Neon, Switzerland. And then we have uh, four regional offices, uh, one in America, one in Africa, one in Europe, and uh, one in Asia Pacific. So I work in the uh, regional office in Singapore. Uh, we represent more than 14 sectors, uh, like finance, postal, telecom, electricity, tourism, commerce, logistics, and our latest uh, sector is athletes, sportsmen. We are organizing them as well. Now, besides these 14 sectors, we have three interprofessional groups. One is for youth, 
Second one is for women, and the third one is for professionals and managers. So uh, I'm the regional director responsible for this sector as well. Uh, under the professional and managerial groups, uh, the co-organized groups are the engineers. Now these engineers are basically well organized and working with us in Europe. But unfortunately in this part of the world, we find uh, uh, the trade unions and the engineers, uh, they, they find it difficult to gel together for various reasons, you know, because you know, trade unions, uh, let me be frank, you know, their image is not that good in this part of the world. So therefore, I mean, uh, the professionals are a bit reluctant to associate. But if we continue with this trend, the sustainable development goals will be a distant dream. So we thought uh, that we must engage the professionals and the engineers uh, so that you know we can uh, we can uh, create some awareness about the international standards, best practices, and uh, which is going to help uh, the professional organisations to improve the quality of life in. The, because engineers are not just uh, architectures of system architectures, they build communities. It's not just putting a power line or a telecommunication, they build communities. So if the countries are to progress towards sustainable development, they must be concerned with the environment, they must be concerned with the natural resources, and they must also be concerned with human rights and business rights. So basically in the academic world, when the engineers do their studies, they are being technically trained, they have the technical know-how and the skill. But when it comes to human resource management and then the standards, international standards, uh, their, their knowledge scope is limited. So as a global union, what we try to do uh, to take this uh, new knowledge uh, to the engineers professional groups so that they can team up with the rest of the workforce and the society to transform this change. So we want the engineering institutions like yours uh, to take the lead in setting uh, the safety standards. Uh, it has to be in your DNA. So that you know, we can uh, avoid uh, the future calamities of this nature. Because you cannot expect the foreign um, NGOs or the trade unions to come and do this. It is your own responsibility. The second thing, I am uh, based in Singapore. So I see, and whenever there are accidents in the uh, construction fields, technology provides the basic. You just take uh, Uber, you take uh, Grab, you take Airbnb. The, the sharing economy is uh, providing more opportunities and uh, people will be innovative, creative, provided we give them the right facilities and the right skill and the lifelong learning culture. Okay, in, in the direction, if we say, say if we look into the India, okay. that we can see, yeah. uh, even after completing the doctorate degree, okay. some people are applying for the post of peons. Yes. Uh, because uh, it seems to me that they could not find out the right way and the ratio of educating the people. Okay. Uh, especially the outcome-based education yeah. is not present, yeah. perhaps. I am not sure. But this scenario is not only for India. Every. Everywhere, exactly. So in that case, we have to find out the way how to divide the labor forces and how to apply the intelligence or knowledge to automate or if we make it efficient in the special areas. So it's very difficult for an organization or a university or government to cope up all these things because everything is changing very rapidly. Uh, and you are like to say, uh, because there is no good organization to handle all of this. But we can stop here, we have to go forward. So 
do you find any way to meet at least the minimize the gap? Yeah. Oh, I just mentioned to you the physical technologies. I mentioned about the biotechnology, robot technology, info technology, nanotechnology, and energy technology. So these are our physical technologies. To counter the harmful effects, we must also have social technologies. Yeah. What are the social technologies? How to learn, how to regulate. So these technologies will have to be brought in simultaneously. So for that to happen, this is why I earlier said there should be greater collaboration with the professional bodies, industry, academia, and the civil society, trade union organizations, and the students, because then we know what is happening in the industry. And this is why I say the professional organization like yours have to be a part and parcel of the globally interconnected professional. Because technology is not limited to Bangladesh or India. And uh, if you now analyze the things, those days, technologies, new products were innovated in the research labs of the universities, and then came to the market. Today, technology is in the market already, and then only it goes to universities. So that's <coughs> because of the internet and all that. And then uh, 3D printing, which is going to come very soon. The blockchain technology, which will completely transform the banking industry, uh, electoral systems, because it is going to be a, a distributory ledger system. It is almost like, so these are coming. So uh, of course, we will not have all the right answers. But what we can do is to prepare to cope with the change. So for that, we have to change from our past practices, uh, our a way of studying, our way of educating people, how to impart new skills. So this is the only way we can uh, prepare the workforce yes. and the organizations to cope. Okay. Just, I want to uh, discuss about the trade union. Mm. In Bangladesh, or <coughs> world scenario, mm. the trade union, they was traditionally. Mm. Already this traditional trade union ship is going to end. Now it is digitalization mm. world, automated world. Mm. Our the total population of our country is very much a major portion is young. Mm. They are the traditional trade union leaders or trade union workers, they are already retired. In television industry, mm. what I have seen, mm. the young people Educated people, their mindset, everything changing. Yes. Because in office or in industry, yes. if we make it completely digitalized, automated, monitoring system is easy, CC camera or other evolution is easy, they have the accountability, they have the responsibility, they need proper training, they need pro proper cooperation, their rights. Basic rights. What, when they lead a, when they are in a conflicts with the management, management have to see the reason conflicts. Our management, our mindset, our engineers, we should have to change. Yes. We need it. Yes. Because the generation starts, start change every her mindset. Look, in our house, now maid, we have to respect her. No servants, he's no, a maid. Yes. <laughs> now he knows the technology. She knows the technology. In a smartphone or a mobile phone, he, she knows everything. Yeah. And she can uh, also, from her point of view, he will, she will monitor the Lord. Yes. Yeah. Lord is monitoring or not now? She can monitor. What is? I think if our all engineers, our managements, if we change them accordingly, according to the need of the global industry or changing industry, I think I think if our target is product, 
this they are not the stakeholders yes, yes. not me or manager yes. they are also the it's exactly. a team yes. management managers they have to look about the basic rights yes. temporary job yes. i want to i want to finish it if you have there should be conflict then there should be compromise yes. negotiation this is the management thank, thank you. you thank you very much i think uh, i uh, just <coughs> i want to add <coughs> yes. uh, what i understand your organization is uh, involved to develop human resource that is human resource development and we are passing the food industrial revolution mm. now after that i think uh, if technological development is going high then lot of the human resources are going to be without work just labor and labor class and that is everybody is if uh, i think and skill or skill level everybody will be uh, maybe lot of human resources will be without work then social problem may be to uh, occur in the society and how you are going to uh, mitigate this crisis yeah yeah okay uh, thank you i mean first i'm in 100% with you this is the message that we want to drive and this is why we are trying to work with the professional organization we have to have a different mindset yes. let us not <coughs> use the tactics and the tools of first industrial revolution era in the fourth industrial this is what we tell our trade unions the sindabad era is over you can't uh, go and work because if you inconvenience your customer and you are gone your company is gone because there are so many others to help oh, sure. so this the management also should have that it is not labor anymore it is the intellectual capital the investment capital what we have now it is incurring a diminishing return if you take in the european and american banking system interest rates are zero or negative and that is very soon it's going to hit these areas as well so the investment capital return on investment capital don't think that is a wrong model if you want to how you use your organization to offer solutions to human problems and that is the one will measure the success of company not making money not making profits you may have all the profits money but if you don't have fresh air and fresh water to drink all that money will not bring anything responding to your question yes the technological revolution was not only today the first industrial revolution we started with the i mean we were all in the agriculture era we got the steam engine we got fossil fuel then we started to automate then we went to the electricity in 100 years time. then we went to the computing power another 100 years later we went to the moon did all that and now within another 100 years we have the smartphone so this is the revolution but each of this uh, revolution era we had same issues because when the horses uh, the the cars came the horse uh, carriages then the electricity came i'll give you one example the handloom industry in india you know uh, uh, mumbai was the center of handloom industry which was sending uh, to uh, europe and else at the time of introducing power looms after the in introduction of power looms a uh, one yard of a uh, cloth if you take 98% was power loom handloom was only 2% so all those people who were in the handloom industry lost jobs but what happened just like a car yes manual drive and uh, yeah. automatic so what happens when the cloth was made with power loom 
cost of the cloth came down. So that people who were wearing one jacket, they wanted to go for two. And then they also wanted to do designing. They wanted to do art value addition. Then you found marketing, designing. So human capacity to respond to change. That was it's not a threat. Even here at this stage, people will be very creative. Only thing, we must give them freedom. We must give them opportunity. Of course. They will be creative. They will be creative. <coughs> Thank you. So one thing. Yeah. I, so I'm understanding your concern. Just you are just uttering the one social engineering. There's no problem. So we are facing much of this some difficulties nowadays. So our uh, effort knowledge become obsolete. Yeah. Body, yeah. So as a professional body, our engineering and uh, IIT has a responsibility to look after our engineers. So my question is, how your I ILO will directly engage uh, to the IIT just to pick up this? Uh, just one clarification. I'm not only, not just only just discuss, or you can directly engage do something. The, yeah, yeah. yeah. IV, yeah. Just okay. Support. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not from the ILO. I'm from the UN Global, 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 Global Union. Global Union. ILO is the UN body, but we work very closely yeah, with yeah. ILO. What we want the uh, yes. Uh, what your uh, okay? Your talk here. Yeah. What we want to? What we are trying to do with IEB to engage yeah. IEB into our activities. So that, uh, especially when we had the engineers conference, I mean, they were busy in their elections or something. We want to invite you people from Bangladesh to attend to these things, so that you know what is happening in the other. I mean, at the engineers conference, we had space engineers from yes. France. The top class mathematics uh, engineers from the Temple University of US. You know, this is the mixture of people. They all, they belong to trade unions because unfortunately this part of the world, nobody wants to be a part of it. I mean, I'm, let me be very clear because as you very correctly said, they have been branded their troublemakers. But now, he, as he pointed out, the younger generation cannot be a fool. And today we had uh, the Bam Bangladesh Bank Officers Association meeting with uh, Dr. Atiur Rahman. It was all the young uh, blood and their way of looking at things is completely different. And that's a good sign for Bangladesh. I'm very happy. And uh, similarly, the things are also uh, quite uh, favorable in other parts of the world. And uh, you have an edge. You have an edge. And uh, I am working with the, the Bangla Link and then the Accenture. Oh, ah, there. So they're here. So they are all the young. Blood. They know the things and they can be easily be made as a stakeholder in the business. Mm -hmm. And that is positive and they are not uh, disruptive and they are very cooperative. Mm -hmm. So this is what uh, I, my uh, suggestion to you, we want uh, engineers institute to be part of uni. And uh, we would like to come and uh, address and share our concern with PSK or whatever the things. So to eliminate these doubts that we are not uh, a trade union of yesteryear. We want engineers to be future ready because we believe engineers are not merely uh, architectures of system. They build communities. So they should be taught about the values, the international standards, best practices, and human and business rights. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Chairman, and also getting to the our honorable General Secretary, and also to Mr. Dr. C.P. Anand. While, while I propose to the honorable General Secretary, um, you are interested to come and introduce with us, he was extremely glad to be, extremely concerned to be welcome, and uh, he was very busy man, and also uh, is a big leader in our, not only leader community, also our ruling party. And he was waiting up to 5, uh, 5 p.m. to still now. So thanks from, uh, from my, to you and everybody. Last year, the Uni, Uni Global, they came and they, they uh, jointly program with the center, a very, very grand program they did it. This year, our political, our election years, that is why we are, we are told to them 
new body or new uh, leader, they will decide it, what they will do. And you can just interview with us and you give the suggestion. Mr. Joseph Yellow, uh, during liberation, we are only seven, seven crore, 50 lakhs, uh, 50 lakhs people. Now we are 10 crore. 2013, our 70% of the whole country is now going to our organization. Our food security, our health <coughs> security, our accommodation, different type of problem, problem will be raised. You have told in your discussion that we are now in fourth regulation, but our CV activities like the first, first regulation. So, in engineers community, they are doing with level function, also development function. One thing, our going, our country is going to the middle income country, 2001 and 2041. Our honorable prime minister give us the vision. We are going that way, and almost giant mega project we have to and going to implementation. So they are most of also engineers, and you first give us, you first give us the quality development of CB, and what's our function, engineers function. Engineers institution is the apex body, highest professional body of Bangladesh, where one lakh are member, 40,000 are uh, their paid member. Mm. Six division are here, electrical, mechanical, textile, computer, mm. and, and, and um, irrigation, and different type. And uh, seven overseas chapter also is here. Very large scale work, I have, we have the opportunity. So I think this is the introduced session. Next year, or next uh, you are welcome. What we will do, you give the proposal to the our honorable, General Secretary, we will discuss our apex body, EC, or our council, then both we, we can move one way. How to solve the problem, how to go the root level, how to go to develop the country. We will do, we will work by the right issue, not the single issue. So I think, and thanks from me to you, from my side, and I think the, our honorable General Secretary will give the important speech to you and us, and now this is and welcome again. Thanks to everybody. Thank you, Mr. Gandhi Prashid. Now I request our honorable general secretary, you will tell something about us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I myself and on behalf of IB, I give thanks, Mr. Rajasri Pilar and the team. You know, uh, our IEB is uh, established in uh, 1948. It is the oldest, uh, one of the oldest uh, organizations in our country. Uh, so, we, we have uh, already told uh, our uh, now in one lakh engineers. In our country, they are working, and now are registered in the uh, 70,000. We have uh, 18 centers throughout the country, and 31 sub-center, and 11 oversight chapters. Uh, we, we have equated to 23 bilateral agreements in oversight uh, throughout other countries. And we have uh, so many uh, functional bodies, like Fiesca. Uh, uh, FIC, uh, uh, American Society of Civil Engineers, uh, and we have four uh, body, uh, accreditation board, uh, Bangladesh Professional Engineers Registration Board, Engineering Staff College, uh, it is from here, 50 kilometers from here, near Magna River, 72 uh, uh, so yes. to big of land there, there is a huge uh, uh, seminar, symposium, class, workshop. Not uh, only uh, in Indina, the the object plus uh, vocational mission diploma engineers, other uh, other people also. They, uh, we give them uh, uh, 
day to day or time to time uh, their efficiency to develop. <coughs> and now we have also safety board. You tell it is an important role in, uh, in IEB throughout the country. And we have also uh, MI, AMI. There is an education purpose uh, like uh, degree engineer. And, and in this various, uh, various way, we work in our uh, apex body. There is a uh, service and welfare also. And they look forward, there is a vice president and areas, one area, they, they look uh, that side and uh, around 48 department, uh, uh, government, non-government, uh, 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 private, they look after them and they <coughs> see their uh, common interest. And now, uh, I thank, thanks uh, Mr. Uh, Joyce Fibriola. You tell our Prime Minister, uh, Honorable Prime Minister leader, as a uh, daughter of our great leader, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman Sheikh Gasena. Uh, his dynamic leadership now, 10 years back, 9 years back, how Bangladesh is now, what is Bangladesh now? You know, today, we are uh, going to atomic class. It is it is our right, and also uh, our uh, infrastructure, our electricity. Uh, Ten years back, nine years back, there is a thirty to hundred megawatt. Now it is uh, around seventy thousand megawatt. It is uh, it is possible. One to our uh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, he give, he give, he give our environment, that environment, how to work. That's why our engineers, they, they are uh, working hard uh, under the leadership of Sheikh Now, now, in future, how to uh, we overcome in uh, 2021? It is uh, finalized that we are going to middle income group. But it is now our next step, 2041, the developed country, it, it is harder. But it is possible if our Sheikh Hasina is remain in <laughs> and leadership. Now, now it, it is also help from your side how to work together IEB and your uni, a global union uh, and now how to we tra train up our people, we train up our engineers, we train up our technologists for, for future, for future, for, for 2041. I think if our Prime Minister is uh, with us, I think uh, it is not 41, it may be 30. So now, uh, now I um, uh, so I now now I take to help from you how to uh, hurdle. What is the hurdle? How, and to how, how to overcome and how to you help our institution and in future. I think we go forward uh, together jointly and I. On behalf of IB and on behalf of our uh, institution, we support unconditionally. So, and we also hope to you support us uh, accordingly. And uh, again, my thanks to you for your coming to <coughs> visit our IB, and I hope we go forward in future. Thank you. Thank you. Just uh, thank you very much. I have brought some materials because you mentioned about the safety. Now this is uh, uh, occupational and safety and health. This guide is published by Uni, uh, and this book is for the retail industry. You know the supermarket. Now this book has been translated into seven language in ASEAN because all the countries in the ASEAN region, Thai, Cambodia. Uh, so this is in English. This is about the safety standards in the retail industry. So I don't know, I think uh, 
in Bangladesh also big supermarkets are coming in. Uh, this may this I thought uh, share with you what we do. So this is not the traditional trade union. And this is for occupational and safety in health healthcare hospitals. Because we think that uh, safety should only be there in other industries and not in hospitals. Mm -hmm. But hospitals also need uh, safety, safety health care because those employees are also oh, vulnerable. Powerful. So these are few uh, materials that I brought to, to give you to IEB. And then uh, some of our training handbooks, manuals, uh, okay. these are because these are for software, soft skills development. So it may be also useful for you. And I have two small gifts. Uh, I have only one gift. So let me just present it to the president. It's a small gift. So for the rest of you, I have drawn knowledge. So, <laughs>